Hello and welcome to Cheer Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center and by me, Lynn Hardman, a certified Silver Sneakers instructor. But you don't need Silver Sneakers and you might not need a mask if you're exercising safely at home. So, uh, won't you join me and the others who are in our listening audience? Hey, before you begin this exercise class, which is approximately 60 minutes, please consult your physician before you do this or any program of exercise. And if you feel dizzy or unbalanced at any point, it's recommended that you remain or stay in your chair. So, Let's get started. All right. You'll need a sturdy chair, a great attitude, and a safe space. Um, in general, you know, enough space to walk around uh, your chair. And you can remain seated the whole time. The goal of the class is to move with greater ease. So please keep it safe and simple and know that you're going to get plenty of benefits seated in your chair. We've got a little music to help our movements just be a little bit more pleasant. You can start out with just a slow march in your seat or on your feet, but please use your best posture as this will go directly to our goal of moving with greater ease. You can step slow, or you can step to tempo. When you're standing or seated tall, it helps your spine elongate, and it helps make more room for your lungs to breathe. So see if you can breathe in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth as if you're blowing through a tiny straw. Sometimes you get stopped up and you have to mouth breathe. But just breathe at your own pace and move at your own pace. Good. It's good to be home. I was traveling for a while. And I know, it feels like I was here the whole time. But it's good to be home. All right, let's preview a couple of things we're going to do today to work on the ABCs. A is for agility, B is for balance, and C is for coordination, and then S for strength. But we're going to work on our heart strength, and we're also going to work on balance, we're slowing down at the end if you care to. Um, right, so here's a pattern that we'll use for balance. It sounds like this. Lift, two, three, march, two, three, and it looks like this. So we're lifting one knee and then marching. Lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three. Got it? Now, we're going to stay safely near our chair or in it the whole time so that we can use it as our balance check. When we're doing knee lifts, it's a little bit easier to be at the side of the chair or in the chair. And you may notice that the tops of your thighs start to get sore and then it's time to stop. All right, so that's a pattern we'll use in a several different ways for working on balance. We'll also work on both sides of the chair. Let's try it over here on the left side. On an agility exercise. Agility is the ability to move our feet in different directions at different speeds. Research shows it lowers our risk of falls. Well, that's good. So get that left foot marching, if you would, on the left side, best posture, sidle up to your chair so you can touch it if you need that balance check. And we're going to rock step this left foot forward, and we're going to imagine a clock 
face on the ground. Maybe it's a sundial. And we're going to step on the 12, and then we're going to step on the 11, and the 10, and the 9, and the 8, and the 7, and then the 6, and then we're going to come back around to the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, we can do that at different speeds and on either side, and we'll work on that. But let's do a little bit more warming up. Take your left foot and march it back a wee bit, little by little, pressing your heel to the ground, and straighten out that rear knee and lean forward like a plane ready to fly. If it feels good on your shoulders, stretch up into a long, strong diagonal. Pull up to the tip of your toes and rest down easy on that heel. Let's go up and down, up and down. Another time, up and down. Now come up and instead of a strong diagonal, let's vertically line our shoulders over our hips. And in this lunge stance, we can balance as if we had an imaginary glass of water on each side. We could also limber up our spine, tucking the tailbone under, pulling the navel in. Inhale, open your chest. Try that one more time. Exhale, close. If your balance is rock steady, take it to both arms. Let's try those two, three stretches. Or you're on the right. Get yourself situated. If you're in your chair, you kind of have to scooch over and let your right hip be on the edge. Otherwise, march that right foot back just a bit where you can comfortably paste the heel on the ground, lean forward, make a long, strong diagonal, right arm in the air, lift up and down. And down, warming up that calf. And then let's paste the heel on the ground and lean forward to give it a gentle stretch. Pull up on the ball of the foot one more time. Right your shoulders on top of your hips, ears over shoulders over hips. And down a little into your lunge dip. Working on balance and strength in your hips and your thighs. You can add those cross crawl arms if you want. Or hold on to your chair. Now, limbering the spine, tuck the tailbone under and inhale as you open. Exhale as you close. This sort of breathing will be very helpful, especially when we're doing our strength work. I've told you before, but the reason this is called chair interval training is it's a whole lot of stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. Modify, adapt, but never give up. Go at your own pace. We're going to transition to the chair for a little dynamic stretch and some more preview of patterns. I suggest getting your heels right next to the chair. So if you lose your balance, plop, there you are, safely in your seat. Keep your knees from knocking as you keep your head up. Sight forward and get your tailbone back. We're doing a couple squats, if you please, before we transition to the chair for some more stretches. And go ahead and get seated when you're ready. Maybe you're already there. Maybe you're already thirsty. So, I suggest you keep water nearby. And as you get it, take your time. Step to the side, lean to the side. Brace with your arm and your abdominals as you get things down low, whether it's water or whatever. Okay. Ooh, that was loud. 
sitting at the edge of our seat because it's so exciting to be together again. Sit tall, pull the navel in as if you're zipping up a very tight outfit. Roll your shoulders up, back, down, and around to just limber them up a bit. Ah, and sitting tall, let's try to stretch out our legs, literally, right and left. Right, left. I'm going to find a beat. Right and left. If it feels good, push that sole of the foot in the air and dorsiflex your foot. And reach with that opposite arm. You don't have to touch your toes, but just pretend. And keep your chin up. And your spirits high. Ooh, this is a good warm up, and we're squeezing those long, strong quadricep muscles. We're going slow enough we can focus on the ankle and the wrist with a flex point flex. Y'all, that's what they said out west, where I just returned from. New Mexico was doing a good job keeping it safe with social distancing, and everybody was sporting a mask. Okay, let's take a stretch. Lengthen out that right leg. Find a comfy strap, a perch on your chair. Support here. Inhale up. Nope, if it hurts, don't do it. Bring it in. And hinge forward. If it feels good, reach forward. Spread your fingers wide. And circle your hand. Other way. Good. Bring the knee one towards the spine. Draw that knee toward the chest as you lean back. And circle your foot. And the other way. Ankles and wrists are really key to our independent living. And just the ability to do activities of daily living. Inhale, fully lengthening your body. Support on your lap as you hinge forward, maybe reaching forward. Spread your fingers wide and circle that wrist. Other way. Excellent. Sit tall, hold the knee over. Draw the knee toward the chest, leaning back in your chair, and draw circles with your ankle. This feels good. And the other direction. If something doesn't feel good to you, don't do it. If you have sudden sharp shooting pain, please stop. Go at your own pace. We're about to uh, begin our first interval of cardiovascular exercise. So we're using a perceived exertion chart, it's not here, a uh, scale of one being the lowest intensity and 10 being the maximal. So we are targeting a four to a seven. A four would be, I feel like I'm exercising, I could do this for a long time. And a seven would be like, Oh, I could tell this is hard work, but I could do it. When you get to 8, 9, 10, maybe bring your pace back down or sit down. And if you have any pain, please go back to the last movement that didn't hurt. Let's work on that lift, two, three, march, two, three. Lift, two, three, march, two, three. This is our balance pattern. We can do it in the chair, or if you know that you are safe and confident standing, you can get on 
the right or the left side of your chair, but please be close enough to touch it should you need your balance check. So, are you moving with me? I'm not just doing this for my own good. I hope you're moving with me. I hope you're calling your friends and say, hey, hey, get ready. It's about time. Move the stuff out of the way. Tune your channel in, your TV into channel five. And let's get busy. Okay, so if you're in your chair, you might notice it starts to be a little sore on the tops of the thighs. So be creative. Maybe draw your heels back or stick them out front. But just keep moving. You could also kick it. Kick. Two, three, march. Two, three. Now, I want you to keep moving while I transition to standing. So promise me you'll keep moving while I get myself ready. Up in the air. Always checking that nothing's under your feet. Except your sturdy shoes. March two, three, lift. Two, three, march two, three, lift. Two, three, march two, three, lift. So, when we need a balance check, we've got our chair. But we can also tap our toe down. And that's Fine. Do your best. And little by little, your balance will improve. Good. If you want an extra balance challenge, be careful. Make sure you can touch that chair. Maybe actually touch it. And then look to the side. Did I lose the beat? Because when we move our head and change our visual reference, it's more challenging on our balance. Maybe you want more challenge for your heart. You can add a skippity doo dah or a little fake hop. But my thighs are getting tired of this knee lift, so let's let's change it up. How about march it out a bit? Shake a leg. Maybe move yourself back behind your chair. We can work the hamstrings to the backs of the thighs from here. Get a nice sort of chair with hip width stance and start with a little mini squat. That wide base will let you to use your hamstrings more. Let's lift our right leg up, up, up. Wait, up, 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 down, two, three, up. Up, up. These are hamstring curls. You stay safely behind your chair. Promise? And I'm going to move out so you can kind of see what I'm doing with my legs. Row, 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 march, two, three. Row, row, row. Did you see me tap my toe down? I need a balance check. Sometimes. Some days my balance is way better than other days. I wish I could bottle those up. But over time, if you're exercising safely within your good target zone, maybe a four to a seven on our one to 10 perceived exertion chart, you'll get better. It's the regularity of your exercise that's going to make the big difference. Now, you are safely behind your chair. I'm going to join you there. Wow, I'm getting a little bit warm. How about you? Let's march it out. All right, well, we're getting a little bit of 
of aerobic activity to strengthen our heart. And research shows that is so good for our overall, overall cardiovascular health and our mental and cognitive health. So, so many ways exercise is good for us. Let's do one more iteration of that pattern. Good words. Let's lengthen out our legs and work on the hip abduction lift. Lift, lift, pull the navel in, zip off your tightest trousers, dorsiflex your foot, and know this, you're strengthening those hip abductors. Stretch the crown of your head upward as if you're balancing an imaginary glass of water up here. Woo, this is getting our hips stronger as well as our heart and our minds. We're almost there. Go at your own pace. Take a break. March it out whenever you need. Have a seat. Take a rest. Join back in when you're ready. One more each side. Woo! Just march it out. Woo! I felt that. If you want to stretch those hip muscles, you can sort of straighten the knee and push into the side of your hip and then the other just one more or maybe one and a half more minutes standing tall at the left side of your chair lift as if you're kicking your heel back pull the navel in or you know how a figure skater does that hip extension Strengthening the hips, up, 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 good, up, 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 yay, time to take a break, we're going to return to our chair, so take your time, get your heels lined up really close with your chair, keep your knees from knocking inward, keep your head up, get your tailbone back, See how it feels to go down slow and come up with a little bit of power. Inhale down, exhale up, if you like. That's a very useful breathing method, but you can breathe however it works for you. Just don't hold your breath. We're going to transition to our first interval of strength. But we did a lot of strength work while we were uh, doing those hips exercises so let's rehydrate take your time step to the side hold the nail in support here Woo. I tell you out west it was so low humidity most days five or four percent we really had to be uh, drinking a lot of water throughout the day, um, especially because we took some high altitude hikes. But I say this because hydration is so important for your balance. One of the leading causes of dizziness is dehydration. And also all of our body systems work much better when we're adequately hydrated. So drink plenty of fluids, Good old water is the best. Um, we're going to use our band and our ball to do some, a little bit more uh, clock work. Okay? So, where do we want to put this? I'm looking at my cheat sheet. <laughs> I've been on, I've been away for a while. I'm doing a lot of stuff. So forgive me. All right, we're going to put this ball carefully onto the right foot. So you can just drop it. We don't want to lean forward too far. It's hard on the low back. You get it underneath your right foot there. Roll it around till you're confident. You've got it right under the arch and the knee. The arch of the foot and the knee. And push into it as if you're squeezing out all the air. Best breathing would be to exhale as you push using our hamstrings, gluteals, 
and our quadriceps to do that. We're also engaging our core mindfully, purposefully. Pull the navel in and brace as if someone got a bot here in the belly. This is our lower body right leg press. Now, we're going to add a little upper body option. So let's give that leg a rest. Grab the two handles of your band. Or if you have like a, just a rubber thing, you're going to hold it with one hand. Straighten that wrist. And then grab the other hand and anchor it near your sternum, near your breastbone, near your heart. Almost where the heart is. And we're going to imagine that we're uh, describing the numbers on a sundial again. So push forward to 12, squish that ball. Push forward to 1, squish that ball. Exhale on 2. So we're going around the clock. Only until we get to 3. And then we're going to come back around to 2. Now this is ultra easy for you. I'm going to encourage you to take a moment. Take it a little more of that band. The less space you have between your hands, the harder it is. And try it again. This time you can go at a slight angle upward with your sundial if you like. Now we're working the shoulders. Well, the right shoulder, the chest, and the tricep, as well as that leg press. Did you get that? All right, we're going to switch it. Look at your feet. Take the ball to the left. Move it around till you are comfortable with the positioning. Give it a good squeeze. Pull the navel in, please. Get everything you can out of this. Leg press, strengthener. Pulling the navel in, bracing to strengthen your core. And then. Let's take a break and set up for the upper body. This is a chest shoulder press. So you've got both handles in your left hand now. Grabbing both ed ends of the tube, anchor them near your heart. And push, if you would, towards 12. Pressing into the ball, if you like, out towards 11 now. Pulling the navel in. 10, out to 9, keep the tension on that, back to 10, 11, we'll do that again, if you like, you can make it easier by moving your hand away from that, anchoring it, and you can try that angle. We don't need to go beyond three o'clock because when we start to push behind, our shoulder is at greater risk of an injury. And please remember, our exercises, the benefits always, we're designing our exercise program to maximize the benefits and minimize the risks. There's no guarantee we won't get hurt, but if we go at our own pace and be smart and keep it simple and safe. All right, let's do one more exercise with the ball. But you can hang up your tubing or just lay it on your lap like a seat belt if you like. Take your time, maybe get that ball out to the side. Go over there, ball. Just want to go over there. We're going to do a little abdominal exercise. And we do this frequently, but today we're going to do it bit different. If you please, sitting at the edge of your seat, pull your navel in, brace as if someone's bopping you in the belly. Wait, it's it's you, your body, yourself in the belly. Sit tall, maybe tuck your chin to lengthen the back of your neck. Lean back, tailbone scooching under. Lean back and now feeling the gravity working against our abdominals. Shoulders down and slide forward, slide back. Keep your heels pasted on the ground. If you're not at the edge of your seat, you won't reduce the risk of, uh, I'm sorry, you'll reduce the range of motion you can use here. 
but we don't need much. We just have to use good form. So these I'm calling ab slides. If you want, you can lift and tap the inside of your right knee and the inside of your left knee. Push hard against that, as hard as you please. And I want you to think the instep of your foot as lifting a glass of water. So turn that instep in and work on the inner thighs. If you want, you can make this really big. And this is hard for me. I hope it's just the right amount of challenge for you. You can make it littler by leaving the legs on the ground, not making the ball overhead, but work with good form. Think about how your abdominals are contracting and getting stronger until you feel like, I can't do anymore. <laughs> That's the goal of our strength work, okay? All right, my ball got a little dusty. I'm going to tuck it away. We're going to transition to another interval of cardiovascular. But let's get a sip of water. I probably don't need to tell you water and hydration is very good for preventing muscular cramps. The kind you might get in your legs at night time. There's other things that could cause that. But just a little bit of limbering of movement, light, gentle stretching um, before you go to bed and throughout the day, and plenty of water during the day is a great way to prevent that. Okay, we're going to um, continue with that clock theme, this little pattern we previewed during the warm up with our right rock step. If you know you're going to be doing this on your feet, please. Oh, there you are. You're, you're getting up nice and, and uh, over here on the right side of your chair. I wish I could see you. But march with that right foot and your best posture. If you're standing, check the area, nothing under your feet. And use the chair in your left hip pocket. And let's get that right foot rocking to the 12 on our clock. To the one, the two. This time we're gonna go all the way back to six. Four, five, six. And then we're gonna go back through time. Five, four. If you want a mental exercise, you could say these numbers with me. Two, one, back to 12. We're doing it at tempo. Let's do it again. One. Two, step on it. Three, four, step on it. Put your weight on it. Five, six, five, four, three, sit tall or stand tall. Two, one, you want to try it faster? Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, back around. Four, three, two, March. Keep marching. I'm going to transition to my feet. Keep marching. Keep moving. Keep breathing. <sighs> How are you doing on our perceived exertion scale now? Remember, one is the lightest intensity. I could sing at the top of my lungs. And ten is the highest intensity. I can barely talk. How are you doing? I want you to talk with me while we do this pattern again, but this time over to the left side, okay? Make sure that the chair's in your right hip pocket, area is free and clear of things you might slip, trip, or fall on. Get your left foot marching. We'll do our clockwork on the ground um, at tempo. Left, 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 right, step on 12. And back. And 11. And 10. Put your weight on it. 9. You can do a little mini squat if you're feeling froggy. 6. 7. 8. 9. 10. We're going to go around a tempo again. 12. Say it with me. 
11, 10, 9. It's good to keep the brain working while the body's working. Where are we? 6, 7, 8. I hope you're getting this. 9, because when we get to 12, we're going to go double time. 11, here we go. 12, 11, 10, 9. Pump those arms. 7, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's do it again. 12, 11, 9, 8, 7, 6. I had a gap. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Woo! That was good. How are you doing? Can you talk? Are you in our happy zone of 4 to 7 on our perceived exertion scale? I hope so, but if not, take a break. You know you. We're going to come back to the right side. We're going to do that same little exercise with a tiny change. Instead of stepping where we put our weight on it, we're going to tap. Same pattern, okay? Best posture. We won't do it as long because it requires that we're on our left leg with that chair in our left hip pocket. And you can do it seated. It's hard though. Pull your needle in. Best posture and tap on 12. Tap on one. Tap on two. Each time you tap, sink into your support leg. Four, five, six. Try to balance. You got your chair if you need it. Back to five, four, three. This is hard. Two, let's do it faster. Ready? Twelve. Twelve. One, two, three. Stretch it out. Four, five, six. Sweep it back around. Did you feel that? Woo, I did. Do you want to do it one more time? Over on the left. So these are like one-legged squats. They're really strengthening the quads and the glutes and our balance. So make sure the chair is where you can reach it. Best posture. Slow. Stretch and reach your left toe. Tap on 12. Tap on 11. Hinge down. 10. Down. 9. We're just tapping, keeping the body tall. 7. 6. Back around 7. Use your hands if you like, but keep one close. 9. 10, are you ready to go faster? Here we go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and sweep around. Ooh, we used our hips a lot on that one. That was not my accident. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm ready to transition to some strength work. How about you? You could just get seated. Use your hands if you like. If you want to add a little challenge to your squats, you can um, cross your hands over your chest. Make sure your heels are lined up right near that chair or touching it. So as you squat down, get your elbow back and then tuck it under. Really squeeze your cheeks together for maximal recruitment of your gluteals. You can do, I don't know, one slow squat, which would be very strengthening. Or maybe, maybe you've already done eight or so. But when you're ready, get seated and have a sip of water, please. Do you know physical therapists uh, use a sit-stand test time to assess our risk of falls? So leg strength and hip strength and that mobility to squat and get up and down are very, very important to our independent living. Otherwise, why would they use that as an assessment? I'm going to turn my music down. I'm going to encourage you to get your ball band ready.
So now you could be using a band like this, just a flat spry band or Dyna band or TheraBand. You may have picked one up along your your uh, experiences with doctors and, and uh, physical therapists. I like to use the bands for prehab rather than rehab. <laughs> Strength training is a great insurance program for our joints. Strong muscles and good flexibility lower our risk of musculoskeletal injuries. Who doesn't want that? All right, take your ball. We're going to do some hip extension. So this is extension, pushing back. Earlier we were sliding forward using the weight of our body to strengthen our abdominals. This is the opposite of that. Tuck your ball in behind you, take your time, and scooch back a bit. Find a spot, hold on to your chair, make sure you don't tip it, dig your heels in, maybe hold on to your chair as you get pushing into that ball. I want you to physically push the floor down with your feet. Squeeze your gluteal cheeks together and push all the air out of the ball as you exhale. Be careful not to tilt your chair. So we're using our gluteals a lot if you're thinking about this. So this is a great back and hip strengthener. Hip extension. Gotta breathe with this one, okay? Exhale as you squeeze the air out of the ball. Inhale, but don't let the ball slide out. All right, that's our lower body core exercise. If you wanted to add to this, you can grab the handles of your, your tubing or your band, and then hold it about shoulder width apart. And we're gonna add a row to our pushing the air out of the ball pushing our feet into the ground and mindfully squeezing your gluteals at your butt muscles. I want you to imagine you're stretching, you're not imagining, you are stretching the two as you squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you. Do your best. If you start to get feeling like a little bit wobbly or shaky, but you're not hurting any sudden shooting pain, just dull achiness, good, we're nearly done. That feeling is approaching momentary muscular fatigue. And that is what we're aiming for. That's successfully going to strengthen our upper back, our rear shoulders, our biceps, our butt, and our lower back. Woo! That's good. All right. We're going to use the uh, ball again, um, but not the tubing. So let's tuck that away. This one is a hard one to do seated, but you can if you work at it. So I want to first show it seated and then standing. If you know you want to stand and work on balance with our hip abduction, you're welcome to get yourself situated on the right side here. Those of you who are remaining seated, good news. <laughs> you know you're, you're the expert on you and you know what you can do. We're gonna sit tall, take the ball, and place it on the outside of your right thigh. Depending on limb lengths and whatever, uh, you might look a little different. Where this hits might be on your hand, or your forearm, or even your elbow. Sitting tall, I want you to push that right foot sliding over the floor. Keep your body straight and true, vertically. Try not to move this left leg and push against the ball as you hit abduct. Pull the navel in and you're getting great core involvement. So keep moving. I'm going to transition to standing and show how it looks there. Take a break when you need. This is a hard one if you're pushing hard. And breathing, God breathing. All right, so those of you who are standing, tall vertical posture, use your chair. 
and push on that thigh. And we're also pushing the palm of the hand or the wrist or the forearm, depending on your limb legs and your torso length. Using those shoulder stabilizers that help strengthen the shoulder girdle and keep us from um, getting a dislocation. Or what's that other one called? Dislocation and separation. Let's try the other side, shall we? Take breaks when you need. Join back in when you can. Best posture, make sure you can touch your chair. Tallest torso, whether you're seated or standing. So we're strengthening our hip abductors with the weight of our leg, which is a significant amount, as well as with the force of our arm pushing the ball in. And we're pulling the navel in. You got that? Whew. This is hard. I need a break. If you're a counter, you like to count, you're going to try to shoot for doing perhaps 12 to no more than 20 of a lower body exercise. You should feel out of gas by the time you get to 20. Okay, we're going to transition back to our chair. Upper body exercises take a little shorter time. Our upper body muscles don't have as much endurance. If you like, you can do a few more squats. And you can squeeze that ball on the way down or the way up. Whew. Whew, it got hot. <laughs> All right, good news. We're going to transition to um, our seated, cool down and stretch. But wait, I have one more balancing act in mind. Let's get a sip of water. As I told you earlier, even if you're not comfortable doing the agility and the balance patterns on your feet, any bit of balancing work that you can do safely on your feet is going to benefit you if you do it regularly. And research shows that we need at least five, better yet, seven to ten minutes of balancing work two, better yet, three times a week. So here's to lowering our risk of falls and having a safe, happy life at home. So this is our tightrope act. I call it a tightrope because we're pretending that we're walking toe to heel on a tightrope. Some people call it a sobriety test, but we have to make sure we're safe while we're doing it. I'm going to suggest, and actually I'm going to turn my chair around so you can see. That you use the chair at your side, use your best posture, and you get an arm's length away so that you could still touch the chair and look straight ahead, stack the crown of your head oh, and the ears over the shoulders, over the hips. And we're going to just stand on one foot. Let's put our weight on the foot closest to the chair and just lift that other one up and try to balance while we touch that chair and look straight ahead without swaying. And then take a slow, tight rope, rope walk, heel the to toe, you might only be able to go four steps before you run out of room. If you can't reach your chair, you've gone too far. Okay? Got to keep it safe. Then we're going to go back. Keep your posture nice and tall. And balance on that foot closest to your chair again. Correct your posture. Stretch up from the crown of the head. Lift your toe and see if you can sway your foot back, keeping your body stable, and then forward. Kind of like a golf putter. 
Good, bring that arm in opposition. And then we're going to just relax. Come to the other side because our balancing leg will be nearest the chair. Get your best posture. About an arm's length away. Make sure you can touch the chair and see it with your peripheral vision. Pull up through the spine. If you can't do this, you can visualize it in your chair. Visualize yourself powerful, strong, well balanced on one leg with the leg closest to your chair. And then gracefully feel the toe. Feel the toe. Feel the toe. Once you get to where you can't touch your chair, you've gone too far, go back. Easy. Breathing. Don't hold your breath. Now, balancing on the leg that's closest to the chair, dorsiflex that toe up, keep the knees straight, and bring the leg through, moving only at the hip. This is a very challenging balance exercise, so we've got a couple of safety nets here. We've got our chair, but we could also step out, and that's our other safety net. Now, if you want to do that one more time to satisfy our five minutes of balance work, of course we did more balance work already. Here's an extra challenge for those of you who feel safe and confident and who are staying within arm's length of the chair and you know that you can step out. We're going to balance on the leg closest to the chair, pull up through the spine, lift that toe, and this time while we're balancing, able to touch the chair, you can look to the right, look to the left. That makes it extremely hard. Then you can take your steps, looking to the right, looking to the left. This makes it extremely hard. So don't be afraid to step out or grab your chair. If you get an arm length away from the chair, that's far enough. Looking around the room makes it really hard. Let's try it one more time, if you like. This is just a suggestion. You know you do, do what works for you. But this is some very relevant balance exercise that is not um, aerobically intense. So standing tall, put your weight on the leg closest to your chair. Pull that dorsiflex that toe up. And if you like balancing while you look to the left, Ooh, look to the right. I'm not as good on this leg. I know why. It's not as strong as the other. Strength is a very important component of balance. Once you get to where you can't touch the chair, come on back. Whew, that was challenging for me. I'm going to turn my chair back around. I hope you got that. The beauty of being in person for these exercise classes and I can look at you and I can say, hey, you're doing an awesome job. Can you, can you uh, pull your head up a little bit more? And I can help you with your form. But, you know, this is working, hopefully. Hopefully you're getting tips, you're practicing as you watch along at home. Maybe you don't have cable TV. Maybe you're watching this on YouTube at Community Access Yellow Springs? If you are, you can do this three times a week, four times if you like. But it's best to have a day of rest in between your strength work so your muscles can recoup and recover and get stronger. Alright, we're going to slow down. If you like a sip of water, please take your time. Get a sip. Okay, one of my favorite um, stretches is simply opening and closing the spine. And this is a good 
uh, started to slow down our breathing and heart rate. We did some of that while we were doing our tightrope balancing act, but think of breathing in through your nose as you bring your hands forward and splay them out, opening your chest, your shoulders, lifting your rib cage, opening your spine to a slight uh, arch if it's comfortable, and then closing as you exhale, tucking your tailbone under, and do it again, mindfully breathing in through your nose, and going at your own pace through your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. These stretches are suggestions, just as the exercises are. So if you find that you're enjoying one, keep doing it. You don't have to move on at, at the pace I'm suggesting. But let's lean back into our chair and do this a modification of the stretch we did earlier. Drawing our knee up towards our chest. Maybe draw your chin down toward your chest, stretching the back of the spine gently and then if it's comfortable you can lay your ankle on your lap or across your um, your other ankle and see if you can pull that navel in and oh, sit up <laughs> that's harder than it looks so if you're here it looks like this and we're hinging forward if you're here it looks like this and we're hinging forward, allowing the outside of that right knee to drift down. If you're supporting nicely on your lap and you want to let the weight of your head draw your chin closer to your throat, fine. Just keep your head above the level of your heart. Sit tall and let's try that on the other side. Pull your navel in and lean back, drawing the chin or the knee toward the chest, and then gently tucking the chin down. Breathe. And from here, if you like, you can sit in this figure four and try to sit up. Oh! Or you could be crossed at the ankles. Allowing the left knee to drift down, opening the hip like a page of a book. Hinging forward helps develop this outside of the hip rotator cuff stretch. If you like, you can just let the weight of your head gently tilt the crown forward. Maybe gently roll it one way. Slow breathing, slow moving, and rolling it the other way. That feels good. We tend to get a lot of tension here, as well as here from sitting for long periods of time. So let's finish off with this stretch. Turn it sideways. Good. You can hinge forward. Got your left hip a little off of the chair as you sort of coax that left leg back. Sit tall. Inhale. Fill those lungs from the bottom to the top. If the shoulder does not like this position, bring it in. And maybe exhale, leaning towards your chair. Ease out of that. Take your time as you position your body facing the other side of the room. Now your right hip's a little off of the chair. Support your spine as you hinge forward to get that right leg back. Sit tall. Let the weight of the right leg drift down and the crown of the head drift up. 
A little opening in your spine if it feels good. And exhale as you lean toward your chair back. Ah, oh, it feels good to me to be home. I love to go traveling and see new things. But this, uh, this last trip we made was kind of a labor of love, but also very enjoyable. We were helping our daughter move and um, thinking next time we're going to hire professionals. <laughs> uh, but this training made made it really easy for me to do a lot of work safely um, and enjoyably. So we're going to finish with a little relaxation where we're bringing our attention home. Home is where the heart is. I want you to bring your attention to your heart. Just get out of your mind for a while. Sit on back in your chair. so that your spine is supported and you're comfortable. You can cross your ankles or heck, you can sit in a uh, lotus style in your chair, but relax and soften the muscles of your face. Relax the muscles of your neck and your shoulders and your arms. Let the weight of your arms rest in your lap. Close your eyes or at least soften and lower your gaze and bring your attention to your heart. As you breathe in mindfully through your nose, filling your lungs effortlessly from the bottom to the top, exhaling and letting go of any more stress or tension. Know that this mindful practice of breathing and attention to your heart can be very beneficial for your overall well-being. As you breathe in, imagine smelling your favorite aromas. As you breathe out, let any tension, stress, drift away, roll down off your shoulders, and fall to the ground. As you breathe in, feel lightness and expansion of your chest and heart an opening, and as you breathe out, let go and feel the weight of your body be grounded, gravitating to the earth. As you finish with your mindful breathing and begin to sit up and open your eyes, I just want to remind you it's so wonderful to be able to have this opportunity to work with you. I hope you're working with me. Tell your friends. Um, and I wanted to encourage you in your home to be safe. Continue to keep it safe and simple. Continue to practice exercises that strengthen you and make you uh, able to do more activities of daily living and extend not just the longevity of your life, but the quality of your life. Improving that is, is, is so, it's simple, not necessarily easy. And regularity is the key. So wherever you go, whether you're at home or you're out and about, please keep it safe and simple. 
And if you're in Y'all Springs, I love to see you sporting your favorite style of mask. <laughs> Bye for now.